Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to use Tuya application with King Kong ESP32 board so that you can use the internet remote continually and remote monitor your sensor state. Okay, let's look at this is our A4S board. The A4S board have many different functions. You can see the digital input and the analog output and the relay output and the analog input and IS485 and the GPL for wind wire sensor. So I have tested with the GS18B20 temperature sensor and also you can use the DHT11 or DHT22, the temperature sensor and the humidity sensor. So this video I just take example for use by the A4S board. Actually, you can choose any ESP32 home automation board uh, from King Kone and use this way, this solution used by the Tuya application. Okay, now let's I will show you how to step by step download the firmware and the set and config into your application. And the first we need to download the firmware. You can see uh, here, just online guide, and you will see uh, how to download the KCS V2 firmware. And you can see this ESP32 download tool. You can just download from this way. And I have already downloaded, so I just click this. And you can choose this ESP32 and press OK. And before you download the firmware, make sure you have connected the USB cable. And you can see here, that is A4S board. I have connected with the USB uh, to my computer and downloaded the firmware. And I have connected this uh, GS18B20 temperature sensor uh, from this GPIO. So you can see the diagram on my computer. And this is loud. And I have used the Ethernet cable and connect with this A4S board directly. So this is work in local network and this cable have connect with my WAN that have the internet line. So because I will use the Tuya for internet remote country. So let's power on. You can see when power on, uh, this power LD is on. Now let's download the firmware. And you can see this is software. Uh, you need to choose the firmware, which board you are using. Click this button and you can see so many firmware just used by the ESP32 King Kong board. This time I click the A4S board. So click open. And now you can click this COM point. So that is COM5. That will auto detect because you have connected the USB cable. And click start. And now you can see the firmware began download to the ESP32. I began download to the A4S board. Just wait for a moment. Okay, after download, we can re-power on. You can see I can power off and power on. And now you can remove this USB cable, not needed to use this cable. And only the Ethernet. Uh, also, you can use the Wi-Fi, but I think the Ethernet is better. Now you can use this King Kong scan device tool. You can see here, this scan device. So you can just choose your network card of your computer. I have used the internet of my computer. So this is my computer IP address. Uh, select this network card and start monitor port and just click scan. Then you will find the A4S board, the IP address have scanned. Now we can use this IP address lo load logging in web browser. And you can see this is the A4S web service. So we can just use the default account, username and account, or oh, is admin, admin. So I can press login. And now you can see this is A4S board. Uh, this is the firmware version. And you can see the input, uh, set for the input, and the set for the output, what, uh, what, what type of output and what type of input. And click the sensor and click the monitor you can see this is analog input uh, for sensor uh, this is DAC means analog output and you can see the sensor because I have not configured so this is nothing and this is input state and this is output you can see I can click turn on this fortunately 
and or off and or on so this can work and for the sensor you can see this is the sensor option and I have connected with the DS18B20 temperature sensor so I just click because you can see here we have two GPLs so you can connect with the two sensors maybe the first is temperature sensor maybe the second is temperature and humidity sensor so it's according to your uh, sensor part so you can just uh, I can choose this uh, which sensor you have connect I have connected with this one so I can click and this unit you can you can set and this is the temperature out upload the value I can set to 0.1 and click save and the system will be restart and now you can click monitor and you will see the sensor state uh, the sense temperature sensor capture if I hold down my hand because that have auto refresh every five minutes seconds you can see every five seconds will auto update the sensor state if you have connect with the second sensor that will display at here because I have only used the temperature sensor if you have used choose the DHT11 or DHT22 that will list the temperature and the humidity at the same time at this section so this you can see can monitor the sensor state okay let's test with the Tuya we need to use the mobile phone to remote country and the remote monitor the sensor so you can see this is a Tuya we just enable this Tuya settings if you have installed the 4G module on this board so you can use this 4G module for SIM card for the Tuya but this time I'm not using this 4G module so I, I'm not needed to uh, enable it and these sections you need to buy the Tuya lessons uh, from us uh, these sections and you will see in our form uh, this is uh, KCS Tuya license for KCS firmware how to hold and you can see just you need to confirm which server location your Tuya account have using uh, you can see this some Tuya different uh, cloud server on the, on the internet and you just need to this three step and tell us which server location of your account so you can see I use my mobile phone now you can see this is my mobile phone you can see I can click the Tuya smart or you can use the smart life uh, just click and click me and click this setting and here you can see that is account and the security and this region this region you can see United States of America and Canada this is my Tuya account which server location and you need to uh, confirm which is your range then you can go to this web URL and you can see uh, according to your range you can visit here you can see uh, this Tuya server location that have the Western American data center if you account is South Korea so also you can see that is Western American data center so this web page have listed all the internet cloud server uh, of your Tuya account so you can see that is century you are repo and which country uh, so many countries have listed and this is India and this is China and this is some different country with a different server location so at last you need, you need to tell us uh, which is your server location and which is your board uh, such as you, you are using A4S board or another board model you need to tell us and just pay 5 US dollar you can see the 5 US dollar no time limit uh, use anyway always can use by the Tuya account for internet remote country and remote uh, monitor the sensor state so when you tell us uh, you need to get the Tuya license and we will send you this Tuya license information you can see the product ID and the device ID and the device secret and the QR code 
So if you have this information, you can see in our KCS web page, you just need to fill these sections, such as I have chosen the Western US. You can copy and paste it very easy. And this product ID, copy and paste it here. And the device ID, copy and paste it here. And this is device secret. And this is a QR code. Just copy and paste, copy and paste it here. And now you can click save. The bug will restart. Okay, after the boot, we can see the monitor. And you will see this Tuya is connected. So that means the board have connected with the Tuya card server. And we can click and click Tuya. And now you will see this QR code for the Tuya application. Now we can use this mobile phone and add this QR code to your Tuya mobile phone application. You can see here, and you just click add and add device. And scan, scan this QR code. Okay, and you will see uh, after scan QR code, the A4S have added successfully. So you can click this down. And now you will see uh, this A4S panel. Here you can see this output, input, and the analog, and the sensor. So that you can see it here. The output, that means this relay. This fortunately, you can see, I can turn on, turn on, turn on, turn on. This fortunately, uh, you can see uh, this LED indicate. I can remove this socket, you will see clearly. And we can press this all off. And this is all on. After all on, the two-year application will feed back the state. So this also can rename. So you can see uh, this default is output. So you can hold on and then you can change the name. Uh, you can add your name by yourself. Uh, relay one and press C. And now you can see the relay name is changed uh, for the relay one. And this you can see, uh, we can add rename any channel press turn off and turn off okay let's look at this is the input now let's look at this input web page that can mount the 12 channel digital input state you can see this is ground this point is ground and this is input one you can see the ground and digital input one that is turn green at this input one. If I shut for this, you can see the input two that will be turn green. You can see here that is turn green input two. So this can monitor every channel of this digital input. And also we can hold down, we can rename it. So you can see here that you can change the input name such as this is DOS sensor, just click save, so that the input state, input device name is changed. So this is for the input state, and the third is analog, so you can see that is analog input, and this is DAC, that is analog output. You can see uh, this is output. And this DAC, also you can set the name. You can click setting and you can change the name, uh, such as uh, if you have used that dimmer, we can change to dimmer. And the mini, maybe is 0 to 100%. So, and the unit, I can input uh, this one and click save. And now you can see the first. DAC is changed to dimmer name and this is become 0 to 100% uh, you can change this one if I change to 100% let's test 
and use this multimeter and because the DAC is output, they are to 10 volt. So let's look at, test it. And this is ground. And this is analog output one. You can see uh, this is 10 volt because I have changed to 100%. If I change to 50%, that almost is 5 volt. And if I change the dimmer and the voltage output will become the different voltage. So you can see I can change easily uh, for any voltage output. So the range is zero and the max is 10 volts. That is 10 volts. So this is DAC output. And the next we will look at this sensor. We can click because I have connected with one sensor, just one sensor, that's DS18B20 temperature sensor. So if I hold on, that is every five seconds will update. You can see the state is updates. And so if you have added the temperature and the humidity sensor, so that will list the humidity because this only is for the temperature sensor. Okay, uh, this is used the Tuya application. Now let's test it. If I turn off my Wi-Fi, you can see here. Now only use 5G for my mobile phone. Also you can click Tuya application and click A4 board and click OR and fortunately is on and on off. So this time I have controlled this relay by the internet. You can see I have used 5G. This is not by the Wi-Fi. So you can use your mobile phone, go to anywhere, just your mobile phone have network and this board have network. So you can control this relay and change, monitor the state, input the state and monitor the analog input and monitor the analog sensor state and uh, change the different analog output and uh, monitor the temperature and the humidity sensor in anywhere. So this is for the Tuya application. You can use this way, uh, used by Kinkonis and the ESP32 board. Okay, thanks for watching.